Hello, hello. I'm back. Um, I haven't been doing a lot of live videos on um, YouTube and Facebook, but I'm back. Um, and today I wanted to talk about when annoyance, when you can thank annoyance for um, bringing presence in your life <laughs> and not presence like gifts, but presence like being mindful, being in the current moment. And um, I've, I have a story for you about a couple of annoyances lately that have kept me present in my life. But before I do that, I just want to um, introduce myself for those of you who don't know me. I'm Tanya Milano. I'm a coach for moms. I help build calm and confidence in motherhood and business um, and in any of your relationships that you're hoping to build calm and confidence in. Uh, and I, I haven't really been, um, active in my live videos for quite some time in the winter. I really like to honor the slowdown, the rest. It doesn't mean I'm not out there working on things, but, um, there isn't like a lot of outward momentum, at least on social media. Right. And, and I've learned to honor winter and then. I feel the 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 urge to get do go external in the spring months. And this is something that we work on in my coaching, specifically the business coaching, is that winter months can really be for dormancy, for like planting the seeds, nourishing the seeds that you already have, right? They're underground. They're kind of resting and waiting for the right time to come burst forth. And so I've, I love to feel into that energy journal. I have some, you know, books that I haven't published. Uh, I was doing branding from own course this winter. Um, and so now I have, you know, all these like other things that I can bring forth and, and nourish and water and give sunlight to and all that kind of stuff. Um, this is in the Envision workshop that I have. Um, if you haven't seen the Envision workshop, it's really beneficial for setting goals. Um, so look for that on my website um, or email. You can always email info at tanyamilano.com to ask any of the questions from my videos because I don't often have the links available. So today I'm talking about when annoyance can bring you presence. <laughs> I guess it's both. It's a gift and a present uh, mindfulness practice. So I went, I just got back from my walk and I knew it was raining. So I prepared for that and I enjoy walking no matter what the weather is. I just prepare by the right gear. And by the way, kiddos love it too. You just have to get the right gear and do it. Anyway, it's a it's my mindfulness practice. It's really important to grounding my body every day. And it's where these messages come through that I really feel like need to be shared. And the thing is, I often will listen to something on my walk, which doesn't always provide the most presence, right? I'm listening to a podcast or um, catching up on audio, um, coaching, I have some group online groups that I listen to um, for my coaching and for other, you know, past groups. So communication. So I'll listen to some of that and respond to some people. And so there are times when I'm walking, I'm not very present. And today was one of them. I was present when I was planning, right? I got my gear and all that stuff. But as I was walking and listening to something, I thought that this annoying sound <laughs> was part of my um, podcast I was listening to. And it took me a second. And I'm grateful that it took me a minute to realize that it was actually in the real world <laughs> around me because it's actually kind of scary that I didn't notice this really loud, annoying sound was next to me right? And luckily I was safe. It could have been something unsafe coming at me because I'm walking in nature and 
who knows what's out there. This, so I paused my video or my, whatever I was listening to, and um, I listened. And I'm pretty sure it was a pileated woodpecker. I could not find it, but it was a loud squawking sound coming from high up in a tree. And I stood and listened to it and only went on like 10 more times. I was like, what? Can't believe I didn't hear, notice it at first. Um, so I stopped and listened and it brought me into my body through my sense of hearing. Then this sense of gratitude, like, oh, thank you, annoying bird, <laughs> for reminding me, you know, about this value I have to pay attention to the world around me, my awareness. And so then I took a couple more um, breaths and stayed with the presence of my body. And then I felt the cold rain drops on my skin. I could feel it through my coat. And I could take a few more deep breaths and be grateful for that stop. Okay, so this is easily more easy said than done, but you can bring this practice into annoyances with people. And specifically, you want to talk about your children because I'm in, I'm running a parenting pause group right now, small group. And one of the biggest questions is, so parenting pause is where we learn the safe seat practice. And it's about coming into your internal experience before you were, you know, respond to your children, the external. And so one of the biggest questions is, what about when I'm trying to safe seat and my child is climbing on top of me or they won't let me do it or they're screaming and, you know, distracting me? How do I safe seat? How do I do this practice, especially with little ones, right? How can I take this time to attend to myself before being with? And this is why practicing on your own is so important, like taking time by yourself to sit and to go through the steps of safe seating because there are so many annoying behaviors, right? Our children are communicating through behavior and we need to take that behavior that starts to arise in ours and look for the messages in it. So, annoying like the my daughter had a I, I guess you call it a meltdown because after school on Friday she came home and was making a smoothie and she likes to use the smoothie top that has a hole for the straw and my and Tegan took it and he said it was his turn and honestly, like, you know, they both can take turns with it. Um, but she had this idea that was hers. So anyway, long story short is she flopped on the floor, crying, hysterically, breaking down, um, just repeating the same words over and over again it's mine, it's mine. Um, so a very young behavior. Now, this is a, like a younger part of her, right? Because she's 10. So, ooh, something that I would label annoying, this loud crying, it's mine, it's mine. Those, I have to attend to what's coming up in me because I value that she needs to process this emotion. She has a lot of emotion that needs to work through her body. And this is the way that it's working through, through crying. And she does like a floppy thing on the floor. Um, 
that is a value to me that I believe. So first of all, I check in with myself, right? Like, this is not about me. This is not about the cup. It is not about her brother. Although maybe there's some things that come out later that she wants to talk about. I have my own ideas as to why, you know, most kids after school, right? We know about this collapse that happens after school. They've held so much in. And this particular day was called transition day where all the fifth graders had gone up to the middle school. So can you imagine some of the processing, some of the emotions, all the different things, excitement, fear, everything, right? It's like that whole range that probably all those kids were feeling around her and her and the adults and all this end of year stuff. So if you have a sensitive, a highly sensitive child, this is a, this can be a challenging time of year. So she, I understand those things. Those are of value to me that I understand that she needs this time. This is the present moment, right? In the present moment, this is what her body needs. In the present moment, I'm having a challenging time with that noise, with the flopping, with the, you know, the voices in my head that say she's 10, she shouldn't be doing this still. All of that is what I practice in my safe seat when I'm not triggered. So that when my child, when I'm feeling annoyed, I can be present with what is mine and what is hers. Okay, so... If you don't have a practice of mindfulness, of meditation, of the safe seats, <laughs> of checking in with yourself, journaling, I have so many options for you. I can't even speak of all of them, but um, go to my website. The quickest way to getting, let me show you. The quickest way to being more present, 90 days to joyful living. 10 minutes a day gives you a prompt, has some pages to write. You can get this on Amazon. That's the quickest way. But if you would like some coaching, please email me, info at tinymilano.com. We could talk about it. I would love to talk about how to bring more presence to your motherhood. And I think that's it for now. One more thing, Mother's Day um, is coming up. I have a small group I'm forming. If you are a motherless daughter, you've lost your mother. And specifically at a, a younger age, whatever that means to you, <laughs> I was 36, um, where it was, you, you had this fantasy that your mom was gonna be around till a much older age, right? Um, it changes the trajectory of your life. Um, and it can be quite an isolating place to be without other people that understand this. So I am putting together a group for May, small group where we'll meet online and we will have discussion questions online. So if this is something that interests you, it's pay what you can. Um, starting at $33 to $97 for um, for May 1st through 22nd. We'll have some Zoom calls. We'll have some other guest speakers. All about this mother energy and kind of remothering yourself, finding that inner mother. Um, so reach out to me if you are interested, and I will get you the information for that. Happy Mother's Day to everybody, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.